Um, all right, so let's get this started. This is, uh, in case you don't know, this will make your clients happy with modular themes. Uh, and I am Chris Van Patten, and I'll be giving this talk. That is me, that is my Twitter. Uh, go give me love there, it's a lot of fun. Um, and also, later on, probably tomorrow, I'll be tweeting out the links to all of my slides, different things that I mentioned during the talk, uh, notes, and um, the stuff that I forgot to tell you. So this is me, Chris Van Patten. Uh, I am the founder of Van Patten Media, which is a full-service WordPress design and development agency. Uh, we work a lot with small to medium-sized publishers online. Uh, we do a lot with theater and off-Broadway, because we're based in New York. Uh, other different products like that. Also fun is that recently we launched a product called Blastoff. You can find that at blastoffapp.com. Uh, this talk is not about that, but just really briefly, it gives you the power of email marketing inside your WordPress site, similar to mail forward or send press, except without layouts and designs and colors and things. It's just plain text. You write your email, you hit send. Um, we put the email back in email marketing, so you're not building complex and many websites every time you want to send an email. So that's that. Uh, but this talk is about modular theme. Uh, what is a modular theme? What does it mean? I have to confess, I kind of made up this term myself, so you might be familiar with the concept under a different name. Uh, the basic idea is that a modular theme is a theme that can be broken down into editable components, uh, sections of a theme, bits of a theme, that your clients can log in, or you can log in, or your team can log in, and make changes very easily without needing to know uh, coding and HTML and CSS and all this kind of messy stuff uh, that non-technical people might not want to know and frankly might not want to learn, might not have the time to learn. So this is going to help you empower your clients to make those changes without needing you. So as a, uh, in the past being a solo designer, uh, freelancing, and now even having a small team around me, one of the biggest ways that we lose time is having to go in and make small changes for clients on like a static site. If we've got a client who comes in and says, hey, you know, we need to update the ticket price if we're dealing with a show. Um, they might need to update that price a couple times a month depending on ticket sales and how things are working out. Um, and that kind of small change can take us away from other work we would rather be doing rather than uh, take the time to do. So WordPress is really great and it makes it really easy to empower our clients, to give them the ability to easily log in and make those changes uh, without worrying about us and paying us, frankly. So it's going to save you time, it's going to save you money, and it's going to save your clients money because it means that you don't have to allocate your team's resources somewhere, uh, and it means that your clients can then pay you every time they want to update a bit of information on their site. Alright, so where have we been in the past? Where just sort of a general overview of web design, I guess. Um, Dreamweaver is kind of a big part of many designers' lives at one point or another, um, or similarly like front page or front page express, where you sort of visually lay out what you want a page to look like. Um, and yes, for those of us who are more technical, we could go back and we could edit the code, but really these, are, these were tools that were intended to be highly visual. Uh, these were tools where you could go in and what you saw was what you got. Drupal, uh, I don't believe this is in Drupal core, but uh, I know it's, it's a possibility where you can sort of, again, we're visually laying out content and kind of, we're trying to see uh, the content uh, in different blocks. Uh, so this idea of content blocks is really popular, and I'll get into that a little more later. Uh, but again, the idea of breaking down a page into smaller components, so it's not just a really like, big page, sort of in the way that Dreamweaver was, like you saw the whole page. Now we're starting to shift in this direction of being able to break down a theme uh, or a website smaller bits and pieces. So here's where we are now, or at least two examples. Um, the first is from Squarespace. Squarespace is a really great service. It is uh, about 10 bucks a month, I think, and uh, lets you go in and sort of build your pages visually. You can see you can uh, include these different components, and that's all very well and good um, and nice. Great. So that's the thing. Um, but here's what we have in WordPress right now. Uh, this is just an out-of-the-box haven't touched anything at all. WordPress uh, 4.0 install. Um, I haven't touched anything because it's not my screenshot. Anyway, um, and you have kind of like one block of content. And it's a big long list of paragraphs that you can maybe bold and italicize. Yeah, you can insert a short code, but it doesn't really capture the look that you're looking for, or it 
isn't easy for clients to use. Like, how many people here have ever tried to explain a short code to a client? It's it's a very uh, confusing thing, frankly, because sometimes it doesn't even make total sense to us uh, as developers and designers. Uh, so, in a sense, I look at those solutions like Squarespace or, or Dreamweaver, <laughs> and that's sort of like the pages or, or uh, the Microsoft Word of website layouts, right? You can sort of drag and drop things into place, you can uh, fill in all these different sections, whereas WordPress, out of the box, without any changes, any plugins or anything, is kind of like the text edit of, of content management systems, right? You can kind of you can put in some text, you can bold it, maybe you can insert an image, um, but it's not very flexible for a client, and it's not very intuitive, especially as your layouts get more complicated. Fortunately, modular WordPress is possible. So I already lied a little bit, and there are actually a couple of different features in WordPress that help this, that uh, are designed to make it easy to edit specific sections in WordPress. The first is menus. Uh, we've all dealt with menus at one point or another that make it easy to lay out a menu. Widgets. Um, we've all experienced widgets. Um, I love widgets and I use them religiously and I think that there are so many cool ways that the widget idea can be transferred into other areas of WordPress. Um, I'm not going to bore you on that right now because that's not what we're here for. Custom post types. Again, we're taking content and we're segmenting it out. So I think the traditional example of a custom post type is like, I, I think the example that they use in the codex, codex rather, is movies. So you can create a custom post type that's movies and things like that. You can also use it for more visual things. Like maybe uh, if you're in a situation where you want to do a slider, you want to do a custom slider, you could do sliders as custom post types and just have each post uh, in that post type be a slider in it. Something like that, right? So it can be something in as large and as all encompassing as movies, but it can also be as small and specific as you want it to be. And that is really handy uh, when you're doing more complex sites and more complex layouts. Finally, is metadata fields, which I want to give a little bit uh, more attention to. Uh, because metadata fields are super valuable. Um, in particular, I'm talking about uh, post meta. So the idea of being able to store information and attach it to a post or attach it to a page. Um, but it, it, you can also get post meta for or metadata for users and things, but for our interests, for our purposes, posts and pages are kind of where we're interested. Um, in particular, I like managing uh, your post meta or page meta with a plugin. So there are two uh, that I have used before and that I can recommend. The obvious one that I think maybe everyone in the room has heard of is Advanced Custom Fields. And what ACF does is it makes it really, makes it really easy to create specific uh, fields that are attached to a page or attached to a post. Um, so you can enter very specific content in that field and have it displayed on your site in a very specific way. Custom Field Suite is actually a fork of ACF. Uh, I think it was ACF 2.0 that they forked. Um, and it has most of the features that ACF does, but it is 100% free, open source. There are no like upsell plugins or anything like that. And it's updated a lot less often, which I mean is a good thing, because I, I don't need to slam ACF at all, because I use it, I love it. But it's like updating once a week, and things break very quickly. Um, and CFS is a lot slower of a development process, so uh, you know it's a lot more stable. Choose what you like, though. These are just two. There's a spreadsheet floating around that I'll link to in the notes that you will find uh, on my Twitter. Um, that I think has something like a hundred different options for this kind of custom field management right now in WordPress, the WordPress landscape. So it's, it's crazy. Use the one that you like, use the one that you feel uh, custom to. But also know that this type of field management uh, is going to be coming into core at some point. Uh, probably, my guess would be around 4.5 or 4.6, so that's like maybe a year or two out. But even so, really good to know that these kinds of fields that I'm going to be showing you and talking about are actually going to be a core feature of WordPress future and won't require a plugin, which is really nice. So the first step for a modular site is breaking apart your theme uh, or breaking apart a design. Uh, and there are a couple things that you want to consider when you're doing that. So you know, if, if you're working from a PSP or if you have an existing theme in mind you kind of want to break apart a little bit, uh, it's important to keep in mind, one, the idea of future proofing. So out of the box, a WordPress uh, theme or, or WordPress site rather, um, might be used for one to two years before it gets really any major updates or any major uh, redesigns of love. So you want to think a little bit, as you're building these fields, how can you make them as flexible as possible for the client 
so that if a year down the line maybe they need to launch a new page, that be, or launch a new product, that means adding a new page to their site, what fields can you provide them or what setup can you provide them that's going to make it as easy as possible for them to build that page uh, without having to come back and pay you more money. Now, as a designer, that might be an attractive option to have your clients uh, pay you more money, but I think a lot of the time with clients, giving them the freedom, giving them the flexibility, uh, lets you focus on bigger picture problems. On the flip side to that uh, are the limits. Uh, so you, at the same time that you want to make it very easy for the clients to make a lot of changes and sort of customize their site the way that they want it customized, you have to keep in mind that they've just paid you several thousand, maybe tens of thousands of dollars for your services, um, and the idea that they come to you for your, your professional expertise, and so you want to be able to sort of say, this is the design that we think you should use, and sort of mold that design in a way that they can't break it. Because if they break the design, then they're going to come back to you and have to spend many more thousands of dollars trying to fix it. Um, so you have to sort of put those limits in place so clients have the ability to edit and have the ability to make changes, but not in a way that's going to damage their site. So this is a site uh, for an off-Broadway play that I think has come and gone uh, since we worked on it. Um, but this is the homepage of the site, and uh, you can just sort of see it's laid out in a pretty standard sort of splash page way. There's a big logo, and there's some text, and we've got sort of opt-ins on the bottom, and, and you've got a menu at the top. Nothing too crazy. But in the green there, these are all the areas that the client can actually edit actually change uh, very quickly and very easily. Um, and you'll see something sort of interesting about the way that I have put these boxes, these green boxes in there. You'll see that they can actually change bits of content. So they can change the, uh, the names on the right hand side there, they can change the logo, they can change the menu items, but the layout, the actual bigger picture pieces of how the layout comes together, those are things that they can't edit. They don't have the ability to edit without opening up an FTP client or something actually mess with the code. Um, the reason for that is that the layout is something that we and the client spend a lot of time working on. We want to preserve the layout as much as possible. But if for whatever reason maybe they get a new cast and they need to replace that main image, great. Uh, if there's a new collaborator who comes in and they need to add that name, they can do that very easily. Uh, if they want to remove it, the media page or something, they have the ability to make those changes very easily. Um, you can even see at the top there, performances begin February 7th, that image. Um, I think on the live site, this is just a screenshot from the dead version, but I think on the live site, we've already changed that to say performances concluded February, you know, whatever it was, when they stopped. So having the ability for them to go in and make those kinds of changes without needing to come to us every time is super powerful for them. Uh, it's great for us, and everyone is happy. So let's dive in, and I'm going to show you specifically on this site and one other site, uh, just some of the mechanics of how they make those changes um, and how we've broken down the site uh, into custom fields. So bear with me while I get my stuff over here set up. <clears throat> So this is the site. This is on my dev environment. So um, you can visit the actual site at this tildevoicemusical.com without the dev bit, but the changes aren't going to be live. So just feel free to visit there later and kind of poke around if you want. Um, the basic idea is that it's just a site with a bunch of pages, which are all here. Um, everything on the site has a page. Um, it's a standard WordPress site. There's no blog here, so we're not going to do posts. But looking at this home page in particular, there are a couple of different areas here. Um, first of all are, is that sort of main section in the middle of the, the logo, the picture, and those, uh, those credits. So those get edited on the home page here. You can see that uh, all those different fields are kind of listed out there. So at the top here we've got the different credits. Um, so we can, again, we're breaking them down into as fine detail as we can. So for credits here, we've got a title and the name. Um, you can see how that corresponds over here. This is the title, this is the name uh, below that. So if I were to put in Batman here, Batman, awesome. <laughs> so if I put that in there and I save and then I go back and I refresh, now the concept of terms are by Batman. But you can see that instead of requiring them to know, okay, the name has to be in a span with a specific class on it, 
uh, or it has to be set to a specific font size, or, or, or you have to change the color, or whatever it is. By doing it this way, by breaking it down into these really fine pieces, you can remove those style decisions from the equation. So they're already made for the client. Um, and they don't have to worry about you know, having in mind exactly how it has to look. They just put in their content and it's just going to work. And because these are loop fields, and the loop field is a, a field you can sort of, you can easily add more of or remove them. Uh, if you use ACF before, they call them repeater fields. It is the exact same thing. Uh, they can go in here and they can reorder these. So maybe we want Batman listed second. Uh, so I'll drag this one up here. Great. Um, maybe I want to remove Batman. I can do that. Uh, again, it's giving them this really nice balance of flexibility and being able to edit things without uh, compromising the design that we all worked so hard to put together. And then down here uh, are the, the logo and this header left image, which is this little block of stuff up here. Uh, and it's basically the same concept. You can add a file, they can upload any file they want. Super easy. Uh, we're trying to, again, minimize the number of uh, decisions that they have to make. You're just sort of saying, this is what you need to do. And I think. Yeah, so we've even got there, we've got a little note for them, for their graphics team, if they ever want to go in and change that logo. We've added a note that says the image should be 848 pixels wide and will be automatically sized down. So they just have to upload the image and break the rest is set. So when you're doing this kind of stuff, these, uh, these fields and things, uh, you don't need to do the crazy level of documentation you would if they had to do code. Um, but in situations like that, especially if you have an image that needs to be uploaded at a specific size, um, or if you have a certain way that they should, you know, maybe there's a character limit on a certain thing, like if maybe up here the title and it has to be like under 100 characters to fit or something, you, you should make those notes. And most of these plugins, CFS, which is what I'm using here, I know ACF does it as well, you can put those notes in very easily uh, and have them right in line so clients can very quickly see what the restrictions are on the field. So that's the home page there. Um, and there are other, there's other stuff here as well. So like we have this get tickets link here at the top, um, this main image here, there's this discover why and time or not can be so much more fun. Where are those changes made? Well, actually, if we look, um, this image here, these uh, things at the bottom here, the buy tickets, those are persistent across multiple pages. So if I go to the about page or if I go to the media page, uh, you're going to see that get tickets icon is there, and this whole footer stays intact. What do you do in a situation like that if you have bits of stuff that actually apply to every page or apply to more than one page? For us, we create an options page. Now, if you're an ACF user, there is an extension that does this very nicely for you, uh, but I think it's like 25 bucks. We do a hack where we just create a page called options, we make it private, and then we put all those options on the options page. So if I go in here and edit that, you're immediately going to see like there's just tons of stuff that they have the ability to change in here. So for instance, uh, here is that get tickets thing. Uh, and we actually give them the ability to upload two images. One that is the main image. And again, we're putting in that uh, 275 pixels. We're telling them what size. And then we're giving them the option to upload a second image that they can use as a rollover effect. So they have the ability to even get that to that level of detail. Uh, and even where it links. So right now on the dev site, it's linking to Google, but if they wanted to change it to a ticket website, maybe in the middle of the show's run, they change ticket, sell, uh, ticket sales uh, providers, they have the ability to go in there and, and make that change. Uh, again, that default image, and we put in the note, and in here, this image has to be a transparent thing, so we've uh, made that note. So again, trying to make it as easy and as straightforward as possible, so they don't have to mess around in code, it's a one click to upload an image or to go to the options page and change some text or a link or something. Uh, and it's, it's really easy to do that way. Um, in this case here, where it says this discover one in time and not can be so much more fun, this is actually two images. Uh, but they also wanted the ability to add in text below that. So we've built uh, a WYSIWYG field. So they can just go in there, they can upload their images, and then if they want, they can go and create a new line and just start typing. They can put in their text that way as well, and I can, you know, you can go into crazy detail here. Uh, we've got you know, their uh, links for Twitter and Facebook, the theater address. There's a note for the theater address. 
So you can see, like, you can really quickly get into really serious detail. Um, one thing that I also like about Custom Field Suite is that you can create fields that let you paste in HTML. So in this case, for this uh, action box that we call it, we have an email opt-in. Uh, with uh, CFS, you can actually just have them paste in the HTML from wherever they're coming from. This is also really useful, like if you've ever dealt with installing analytics and like have a client maybe who comes back to you every couple months and like, hey, I want to try this new analytics provider or I want to add a live chat to my site. Um, and you have to kind of constantly going in and adding those codes in. You can create a field like this with these uh, text fields and just have it output from the header of your WordPress site. So they can go in and add that code every time uh, that they want to make a change. So making it really just easy uh, for them to update the site and make these kinds of changes without worrying about you. Check out the time here. We're doing great. All right, uh, one more example from this site before going to another site is uh, here on the economy on the about page. page. Yes. All right, so we're here on the tickets page, and you can see down here that uh, the design actually required these separate tabs with content. Um, and originally when I saw the design, I was like, okay, well, we'll just build three separate pages that they can go in and edit each of these tabs, uh, and then we'll create some kind of overview page that links to all of the tabs and connects them all together. Actually, this was a situation where there's an even better, easier example or easier way to do it, and that is going back to that new field or that repeater field. So if I go to the about show here, oops, girl, tickets, that's where I'm going to be. It's just three simple tabs. Uh, and they can put in the content here, they can, it's just like editing a regular post or page. And if it got more complicated than this, and if we wanted them to have more fields, we could very easily add them. Uh, and of course, they can add more, they can add more tabs, you can rearrange these tabs. Again, just trying to keep it as simple as possible and uh, make it very easy to update these pages. Now, I believe we're going to go into some uncharted territory here. That if I delete all of those, okay. No. This is how it's done. Okay. So if I only wanted like one tab or something. Uh, I can go over here to the template and just choose default template. And when I update that, uh, WordPress is automatically going to say, okay, you just want one tab, so we're only going to show you uh, that one WYSIWYG editor instead of the three that I was showing you there before. Um, so in that's a case where I did it with the template option, but you could also very easily have it say, hey, if there's only one tab in the field, they haven't added more, then only just show one. Um, and if, I, if I were to do this again, I probably would. Cool, so that's that site. Uh, something more recent and uh, that I also want to look at, which is going to play into the last bit of the talk, is another site that I have to bring up here. This is a site for a play that is opening. Oh. It's opening soon. There we go, there it is. Um, all right, dev environments are weird. Anyway, uh, so this is a site that we have built uh, for the same uh, client, basically, the same producers. Um, and again, using a lot of the same stuff that I just showed you. So um, the logo can be uploaded, they can you know, upload a special logo there. They can edit the buy ticket image and they can edit where it links. Down here, you know, they can paste in their MailChimp code and they can upload a map image. And, uh, these different little social media icons there, that's all stuff that they can change. So again, it's, it's, as you start to build more of these sites, you can reuse a lot of the same tricks uh, between different ones. Something that we did for this site, which is uh, not totally unique, but it's new for us. Um, not really new, but we're doing it in a, a new way. Bless me. 
um, is that we are leveraging short codes uh, in a big way. So, like I mentioned earlier, short codes can be kind of messy and kind of frustrating to deal with, which I'm also going to touch on in a minute, which is really exciting stuff. Um, but here we have a client who uh, the people managing the site knew WordPress already, they were familiar with short codes, so for them it made sense. Um, and that's another sort of bit in this whole process. You know, understand your client, uh, what their capabilities are, so you know uh, what you can build into a site and what features you can take advantage of. So for them, looking on the About page here, there are sort of two sections of this page. Uh, there's the About strip on the top, which kind of explains what this play is. Uh, and then below, there's this Cast and Creative section, which has uh, a really awesome cat and a really ugly person. I don't know why. Um, so out of the box, what I might have done before was just have that loop field and have that about page section and have them hard coded in. So the about section was always at the top and the cast and creative section was always at the bottom. But we actually did for this client was we built that out as a short code. So now they have the flexibility to say, okay, we want our main block of text up on the top. This is where the cast of creative is, but hey, maybe we want to add a new section in there below that. So now they have the ability to do that, to be able to go in and, I don't know, just put in some random text. And if I, in theory, update that, and then refresh over here, great. It's exactly in line. Uh, it's just as I expected. So you can see that when you start to incorporate things like short codes and things like that, it can get even more interesting. Now again, the problem with short codes is just kind of how messy and uh, confusing they can be. Like, if I were to show this to a non-technical person, like, I, I imagine the first question that would be asked is, what is that, like, bogeyman underscore team thing? And, like, why are the brackets there? What does that mean? So this brings me to the next part of the talk, which is... the future. What does the future look like for this kind of stuff? Um, let me switch off the display mode because it's playing here and so I know what's coming next. Alright, so what's in the future? Um, well, already, right now, again, I lied a little bit earlier about there being menus and widgets and other fancy things like that. Um, but there are also a number of solutions out there that make this kind of modular thing even easier. Um, the Advanced Custom Fields plugin I mentioned earlier has an extension you can buy called Flexible Content, which is really cool. I'm not going to go into that now, but check it out. Um, there, there are multiple plugins, probably at least three to four like, really high quality ones and a bunch of others that are kind of in the beta, still working on phase, that let you sort of visually display how the content works um, and sort of see it in a more uh, flexible manner. But this stuff is not just for plugins. It's also coming into WordPress core. So this is an image of a feature called Content Blocks that was being worked on, uh, at, uh, I believe, during this past release cycle. It's not going to be in core now. It's probably not going to be in core for a couple versions to come. Uh, but the basic idea is that you put in your text, in your text editor, you know, in the visual editor, as you would any other time. Um, then you can add blocks of text. So uh, you could add in an image, or you can add in a gallery. Uh, and, and again, if you're, if you're familiar, you know, these are all like very standard short codes and bits of code that the WordPress editor already supports. Um, so, of course, we've all used this more. Um, I'm sure we've all inserted it in a gallery or a video of one point or another. And this is an interface that's going to make it even easier to do that. So, if you've ever tried to explain the OMED stuff to a client, it's like, you no, know, if you just paste the link into the editor, it will automatically be a video. This is a really great interface that it, interface that's going to simplify some of that. But even more exciting is how this is going to affect uh, bringing in your own short codes and customizing your short codes. This is a short code displayed inside of uh, TinyMCD, which is the technical name of the WordPress WYSIWYG editor. Um, and this is where things are headed. Uh, this is not possible right now. I'm pretty sure this is just a mock-up. Um, but the idea is that eventually you'll actually be able to create what's called a view for a short code. Um, and that's basically saying like, if somebody inserts a short code, you can actually see a visual output of what that's going to look like. Right now, uh, that's possible if you've ever inserted a gallery in the past couple versions. Now you can actually see how the images look in that gallery inside the WYSIWYG editor. 
Um, this is going to get even more complicated and more awesome in the future because you can see there they've inserted Google Map. They can actually choose the location of the map in the short code, and that's going to affect how the short code is going to display. That's not possible right now. You can't actually have like fields like this inside a, uh, a view like this in TinyMCD. But that's where things are going. That's kind of the improvements that we're going to be seeing in the future. So it could get to a point where you can create all those different types of content box, like the idea of um, the cast and creative list on that first example, or, um, or even the one in the last example. <laughs> have them insert a field, uh, insert that code into the site by pressing a button that would probably be up in the top of that uh, visual editor. Have it insert, be able to edit it right in line and see how it's going to look before they leave WordPress, uh, or before they even save the page. So that's where things are going. Um, it's a really exciting time to be thinking about all this kind of stuff because there are so many different solutions and uh, it, it's so early in the development of a lot of these that you can really have a big impact. Uh, so I highly encourage you to check out uh, the WordPress core uh, blog, the core dev blog, because that's where I get these cool screenshots and mockups from. Um, also check out the metadata group if you're a technical person. Uh, the metadata group is building all of those custom fields that I demonstrated earlier into core. So they're creating a plugin that's going to do that and eventually, hopefully, merge it into core. So join them. Um, I'll put the link in the notes so you'll be able to find if you follow me on Twitter. Uh, and I'll post those probably tomorrow morning. So that's all I've got in the talk. But it's kind of a crazy topic with a lot of different angles. So I'm hoping that there are some really great questions uh, or apples to throw at me. Yes? How do you ascertain your client's uh, level of uh, knowledge of what they feel capable of doing? Sure, great question. So the question was how do you ascertain the level of your client's knowledge? Just to kind of know how far in depth you go with this or how not far in depth you go with this. Um, and the only real answer that I can give is that it, it just takes time. Um, we're fortunate with this client, we've been working from both of those two examples. We've been working with them long enough that as we get you know, further and further, you can see from the site that I built a year ago versus the site that we are still haven't even launched yet, um, just how different you know, we're using the shortcuts that things are. But if you don't know, and if you're pressed for time and you don't want to go through and give your clients an HTML quiz, um, the best way is to just assume that they're not. Because even if they are, even if they do understand the HTML and everything, like that's great. Um, but you have to assume, especially for a company, that at some point somebody's going to get a hold of that website who doesn't know those things. So I guess the way that I would put it is plan for the worst uh, or plan for the lowest common denominator as much as you can. And frankly, um, I mean, I'm a very technical person. I am a developer by day. Um, but even me, when I'm building my own projects, I always build for that lowest common denominator. Like, what if I didn't know any of this stuff? Because then I can hand it off to somebody else on my team, uh, even for my own personal website that I really don't ever, <coughs> no one else touches. It just simplifies my life to sort of eliminate some of those uh, things. One of the core WordPress philosophies is decisions, not options, uh, that they use in the development process and just deciding what features go into WordPress. And I think we can carry that not only in, uh, we can carry that out of just WordPress's actual development into the way that we build sites for our clients. Any other questions? Yes? Um, I'm just interested in that options page that you marked private. I thought you were going to say, like, what would you do if you had multiple pages? And I was thinking you were going to put it in the widgets area and, and, and just do the same thing in widgets, but you find it's easier for clients to yeah, uh, and I think it just comes down to understanding, not understanding, but if you can tell a client everything is in pages, that's really valuable. Now there are definitely things that we manage outside the pages, like menus. Um, if I turn back my display here, I forgot my cursor's gone. So, um, there we go, hello. Uh, all right. But again, it, it also depends on the project. So if I go to this uh, bogeyman site here, these links up here, these are managed as options because they're actually images. So it's just easier, rather than trying to hack an image uploader onto the menu system in WordPress, it's just easier to do them separately. Um, for this one, because it's all text and it's all sort of standard WordPress menu, that's one that got managed via menus. But it, it depends on the scenario. Any, yes? So uh, you probably didn't mention it in the case of the time, mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't used this kind of model for two just to mm -hmm. And how easy it is for this custom page for to design uh, or for to develop to include that into the whole page because you didn't mention anything about that. Yeah, um, great question. 
question. So the question just to repeat for the camera was how do you incorporate these methods into the home page, right? Um, well, with WordPress, so for like So if I reload the home page here, um, we actually have the home page set up as a page. So they can go in here and edit the page, um, and there are all these different options. So uh, to do that, you would just go into settings, and then you know, set a specific page as your home page. And then ultimately this gets output, um, here if I open this. So this is just the code for that page. So you can see where I'm including uh, different fields in different places. So all those credits down here that I loaded, lost my mouse. Um, but anyway, the uh, the credits that are on that repeater section, those are all loaded out of CFS. Um, that default like featured logo image is up toward the top. Um, so it's just breaking it down and putting those tags into the right place when you feed. But that's technical messy. Oh, yeah. Yes, you do have to do the development um, with plugins like this, um, which is part of the reason why these plugins exist, is that uh, you as a developer sort of define the parameters, you define where you want specific things, uh, and then you can you know, hand it over to your clients who don't know how to develop them. I believe there are plugins out there that are designed to do this kind of thing sort of automatically, uh, but I've never used them and would not want to comment on whether they're good or not. Yes? Great question. There, there may or may not be an exporter importer out there. Um, I know that CFS won't pick up ACF fields, but you can't export data out of custom field suite. And I'm sure, I'm not sure, but I hope that somebody has written a migration tool. Um, if not, then that's our first project. Yeah. Um, I, I still have, you know, I've pretty much switched everything over to custom fields suite for new builds, but I still have old builds that use advanced custom fields and you just keep plugging away. And eventually, if there's enough budget and enough time, then you flip them over. Any other questions? I think it's just about, got like five minutes left. So if there's no, yes. Great. Great question. How do you determine what should be a custom field versus a widget? Um, so I used to do sort of as much as I could as widgets because I love the ideas of widgets and I love being able to draw, drag and drop these different things and I think that's amazing. But ultimately, it's not what they're there for. Um, and it ended up turning out to be just more complication than it was actually worth. Um, so I started shifting away from using widgets for everything to widgets for sidebars, which is really what they were designed for. Um, there are tools out there that sort of can repurpose widgets, and I, I actually recently, I don't remember the name of it, but I saw a plugin that can actually take all of your widget areas and or can, can make a page a widget area, can like register a page as a widget area, and then let you um, like drag and drop widgets while you're editing the page, but it's not a custom field section of widgets, but that's kind of next generation stuff. Um, so long story short, I use widgets for sidebars, the rest of the stuff in the custom fields, and I am yearning for the day when some of that stuff I showed at the end is in place, because I think that's when it's going to get really interesting, having those specific blocks, because that's basically like on-page widgets, uh, that stuff at the end there. Um, so when that's ready, then, then it'll be truly seamless. For now, it's just kind of which is stay in their own special place. <laughs> cool. Um, and what's the user access? So what kind of user access do you get from the user side? Does it go up, does it be able to update this custom page? Yeah, so they would see something. They would basically, they would get a standard WordPress page editor just like this one. So they've got their section on the top there. The custom fields are down here. Um, so they have basically the same access that I do um, to the site. Um, it just displays the custom fields uh, on the page as well that they can use to make those changes. Does that help? Yes, for me it does. But for them, I'm not sure. Because they still can do the pages and they still can do the post and make Sure. I, was, I was interested if I can give them only the access to this custom page, as I said. 
Yeah, there, I mean, there are probably tools out there, I know there are tools out there where you can create maybe a custom role for your clients, um, and with a custom set of capabilities, they can only edit certain pages, or only access certain pages. For us, um, one of the advantages to these custom field type things is that we want to be able to give our clients full access. For a long time, those kind of edits had to go through us, and that kind of, this kind of system, our goal is to remove ourselves completely, so we can hand over a finished site and say, Everything is yours. What you do from now on is your fault. <laughs> so. Cool. Um, unless there are any last minute questions, I think that's going to do it. I'll be around today. I'll be probably the first hour of the after party. Ask me any questions you want. Um, ask me about last stuff. I've got free stickers.